Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Strategic Command World War One. I'm back with the Central Powers Let's Play. And that's a historical Let's Play. Previous episode we captured Brussels and advanced into Belgium. And I uh, do hope to make my advancement uh, through, uh, well, more of Belgium in this one. We'll see how things go. Um, for now, though, let's use the Navy and try to search for some enemy ships. Now, we didn't really find them. Um, I'll be looking to uh, engage the British in naval combat as well. I know that they have a bigger Navy than I do, but, well... The thing is that um, maybe I will be able to outplay them and if that's the case then I can deal a crippling blow to their their navy indeed. So I'm definitely looking to get these ships all out there uh, but not too far so I don't want to go all crazy, but I want to have the full power of my navy ready if I do spot some enemy ships with, for example, my submarines that I'm sending out there right now. Um, but not so far out that the British might come at any moment and destroy all of them. Um, so I'm basically just betting on the enemy not being able to see these guys, which is a risk, yeah, but... I'm thinking that the AI will not be able to respond to that. Um, as for the Austro-Hungarian fleet, I have much less confidence in, in their fleet. So um, first, I definitely want to go and get these guys back. I need to get them repaired and then I'll see what I can do. Because attacking with five strength battleships, etc, etc, is just not going to be good enough, I think. Um, so, and that's going to be that. Uh, these guys are already all right you also can't move anymore this is probably not a good idea we know Proskurov is empty though hmm will be interesting to see it let's take it and yeah, I'm just doing a last check on anything that I can do here. So I don't want to go out too far, but uh, yeah, like I said, some of these guys might actually get destroyed, but who knows? I'm actually just kind of testing the waters here. Just to see what uh, what's going on. And... Yeah, like I what I said before, I I don't want to have a defense at Gumbinen. You need to move in there, protect that before they get to Konigsberg proper as well. Um, recon bombers, sure. Let's go here for now, and I think we're good to go. Um. I'll keep these guys there. I'll rearrange the HQs on the next turn. And, uh... Yeah, well, I have no MPP to spend, so I can do that. Yeah. And Germany celebrates the capture of Brussels. Belgium moves the government to Antwerp. Luxembourg surrenders. Plundering the biggest amount of MPP you can ever get. Commander of the High Seas Fleet, Admiral von Ingenol. Our, our Mittelmeer Division, whose flagship is the Goeben Battlecruiser, is currently in the Mediterranean, sailing towards Constantinople. It is recommended that the Goeben continue to the, on to Constantinople, well, where it will be taken into service with the Ottoman Navy and renamed the Yavuz Sultan Selim. If you decide not to send the Gubin on to Constantinople, then she will instead sail to Pola in the Adriatic, where she will serve alongside the Austro-Hungarian Navy. Would you like the Gubin to sail to Constantinople to serve with the Ottoman Navy? Yes. Or would you rather she sail to Pola to serve alongside the Austro-Hungarians? 
Saying yes to this will not only provide the Ottoman Navy with an urgently needed reinforcement, but it will also help the mobilization opinion of the Ottoman Empire towards joining the war on our side. So why would you say no if you get the same ship only goes to the Ottomans instead of the Austro-Hungarians? Makes no sense to say no. France increases its arms productions in the southwest. Sure. General von Bohm Ermoli and the 4th and 7th Corps of our 2nd Army are currently en route to Novi Sad and Temesburg near the Serbian border, where they will deploy shortly to take part in the invasion of Serbia. However, deploying them there may leave us with insufficient forces facing the Russians, therefore it has been suggested that we send them to the Russian border instead. Unfortunately, sending them to fight against the Russians will delay their arrival by several weeks. Would you like these units to immediately deploy to fight against Serbia? Yes. Or would you rather send them to fight against Russia? Notes. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia before their army had finished mobilizing, and Russia's support of their Serbian ally led to the mobilization plan being changed. This caused extensive delays and confusion, with many of the soldiers sent to fight the Russians having to march long distances after disembarking from their trains. Additionally, additionally, sending these units of their second army to serve against Russia left Austria-Hungary's offensive against Serbia lacking in sufficient strength. Uh, let's take a look though, because we currently have four of these guys. Uh, well, five units against Serbia. And basically, we don't really have that many units against the Russians, and I'd rather focus on the Russians right now. Um, so... I'm just going to say no. I would rather send them to Russia. Even though they will arrive later. French mobilization continues. Russian mobilization continues. Austro-Hungarian mobilization continues. And the UK starts sending supplies to Russia. Apparently. So we're getting extra... MPP from Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Okay. And a lot of food supplies via neutral Netherlands. Okay, we have to keep sight on that because that's going to be pretty critical. 65 is a lot. It's 20% of our MPP, so... Okay, they're entering Gumbinen. Taking... Or making Belgrade stronger, but I rather chose to destroy that enemy unit than to capture Belgrade. We'll see whether that's actually good or not. Hmm. I mean, I'm going after Belgrade next. These three... Uh, these core units are much too powerful for the Austro-Hungarians at the moment. So nothing yet. Fleet moving. All fine. Okay. They're taking Teal Set and Mamel. Oh wow. That's a lot of damage actually. Okay. That's a lot less. I think the average must probably be something like 2-2. Two, two. They're getting smacked for now. Still hoping to be able to retreat there. They're definitely out in, in force here. Only happy that I'm holding on so far. Hmm, okay. I'm, I might be able to destroy a cavalry unit though. Maybe, but I definitely need to retreat. So it's gonna be pretty tricky out there. Not gonna lie. 
I, I don't like the way that looks at all. Okay, they're also digging in. The arrival of thousands of refugees from Galicia spreads fear throughout Austria-Hungary, and the loss of grain from Galicia leads to hunger in, in Austria-Hungary. Russian morale is boosted by the capture of the Galician oil fields. The UK seizes the Ottoman dreadnought Sultan Osman I. The Ottomans are outraged at the British seizure of Sultan Osman I, which is a naval vessel. I thought it were, there were two naval vessels that the, um, the British were building for the Ottoman Empire, but then they decided to keep them. Even though the Ottoman Empire didn't even join the war by then. Fear of German raiders upset straight from the British Empire. At least they didn't get destroyed, those units, but they're in a very dangerous uh, situation, that's for sure. Aiding Austria-Hungary. Without assistance, our Austro-Hungarian ally could struggle to achieve decisive victories against Serbia and Russia. In due course, it may also have to face war with Italy. It is therefore recommended that we send aid to Austria-Hungary. To do this, click on War Maps at the top of the screen, then Convoy Map. Then click on the German flag and you can adjust the number of military production points to be sent to Austria-Hungary every turn. Given our weakness in East Prussia, we could greatly strengthen our position there by bringing Paul von Hindenburg out of retirement and giving him a field command there. To assist him in his duties, Erich Ludendorff can serve as his chief of staff. Providing Hindenburg and Ludendorff with the necessary logistical support will cost us 200 MPPs at 50 MPPs a turn for 4 turns. Would you like to appoint von Hindenburg as a field command for at Marienburg in East Prussia? Let's check the notes. Paul von Hindenburg has retired from the army in 1911 after 45 years of service. Being called out of retirement at the start of the war, he defeated Samsonov's second army at Tannenberg and then von Rennenkampf's first army at the Mashurian Lakes. His successes in the east led, him, led to him replacing von Falkenhayn as Chief of the General Staff in the following year, with Ludendorff taking on the role of First Quartermaster General of the General Staff. Together, they directed German military strategy until the end of the war. Um, the answer is yes, I would. Von Hindenburg comes out of retirement to command in East Prussia. That's some beautiful picture that they probably... I, I mean, look, I, I'm not gonna lie, they might have taken it from Wikipedia. Um, I know that the makers of Order of Battle always do this. They always take these pictures from, from Wikipedia. Um, because it, it's always the pictures that they show on certain Wikipedia pages. I, I checked that out. And they might do that here too. But I'm not sure. Who knows? A huge number of refugees have fled from the areas of fighting. And the need to feed, clothe and house them is placing a huge burden on our empire's economy and infrastructure. If we are to prevent any further impact on our national morale, it would be wise to invest in caring for the refugees. Saying yes to providing food, clothing and organizing housing for them will cost 50 MPPs and it will raise our national morale by 2000 points. Whereas saying no will increase demoralization within our land, leading to our national morale falling by 2000 points. Um, notes. More than a million people became refugees in the first year of the war, being displaced by the successful Russian campaigns around Lemberg and Przemysl. The news they brought from the front affected morale, and they placed a huge burden on local services, so the authorities acted to provide them with relief, ultimately spending more than 2 million crowns on their care. So we, we kind of have to do this. That's, it's for the best, I guess. Providing care for refugees increases Austro-Hungarian national morale. And here we are in the second turn. Um, let's start with the offensive over here because, uh, you know, we we got somewhere at least. And I also think, yeah, let, let's try to take more territory first. So I I think we're definitely looking to take Antwerp this, this turn as well. Uh, but as I promised, first things first, I'm, I'm going to take care of DHQ. So... I should um, attach these four, detach you and you, and then attach, okay, so they can hold six, and I guess they have these these guys, that's going to be pretty important, as a rating of seven, this one of five, this one of six, and this one also seven, so I definitely want von Kluck 
to um, go in there. And that's these guys. But um, I'm sure that I can use more guys. Let's detach all of these. Because that's that. Then you need to take these to... Uh, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So those guys. Then you have three, four, five, six. You have one, two, three, four, five. And then I'll send you out here. Um, oh, can I undo that? It doesn't matter. I can attach these guys anyway. Um, that was the whole point. Okay, so I do have the HQ structure set up properly for now. So let's get to business. I <clears throat> I think they can still move even if they move in here. Yeah, they can. Okay, good. Two and one is not exactly what I'm looking for, but uh, okay. Yeah, let's do this first then. Not off to a great start, but maybe we can fix this. Uh, you can no longer move, huh? Hmm. Let's actually move you back to Liege. Come on, is it, is it gonna be this way? I certainly hope not. Um, you can still attack as well. The, the thing is, I really need to take Leal as well, so... I don't need to take down these two guys, but I... For sure, want to take Antwerp. Like, them having Leal undefended is just too big a, a prize not to take. And the same for the loose mine, uh, or Lowe's mine here. However, you want to pronounce that. <clears throat> Yeah, the HQs are mixed up again for now, but uh, I, I think this, this works out for the better. So what I need to do then is many of these guys actually can't move that much forward. Okay. The thing is, I'm, I'm kind of looking to destroy some enemy units here as well. So let's try to do that. I think it's also very important to to try that. If I can take Nancy during this turn, I'm in an excellent position because basically at that point Verdun is gonna get into an even more precarious situation being um, basically they're coming from this point. They're already d starting to dig in along this line, which makes it already very challenging to, to take that. I'm also not looking forward to trying to take Epinal, uh, for sure. But again, it, for now, it, it's mostly about destroying enemy units. So I'm definitely moving you to the rear and I'm gonna leave the guys at Ferdown, which have six entrenchment, but the guy at Nancy has absolutely no entrenchment. So I think I can take it. As long as I play my cards right. Hmm. I mean, you also get to attack.
Okay, so now I want to get a 10 strength unit into Nancy itself. Uh, maybe... No, not from up there. So it needs to be these guys. And I'm not even going to attack the HQ. As much as I would like to do so, I'm still expected to take one damage from that. And I think I need to have these guys remain at 10 strength at the very least. While... Um, holding my positions along this area so i'm gonna move you into the wash over here and then obviously also not attack i don't think i have what it takes to defeat these guys as well so i'm not gonna try but i will try to hold a defensive position and if i can at the very least keep destroying french units that kind of negates uh, their mobilization efforts somewhat it means that i can keep pushing forward um, it will be very difficult to take either Belfort or Epinal, um, but taking Verdun is not going to be a thing for sure for a very long time until I can potentially cut them off. Mm, this is a pretty good point to try and destroy enemy units though. Let's see if I can switch these two up. Yeah, because the, the damage is just uh, too bad for now. The one, <clears throat> the one thing that's, uh, I guess, okay here. Um, can I reinforce you guys already? Yes, I can. Okay. Let's try to reinforce um, as many units here as well. I'll keep the cavalry here for now. This is mountainous terrain, so I actually do expect them to be able to hold that. Um, yeah, my... It's still going to be tricky because either of these two hexes... I kind of need to hold this at the very least. You can go here... And you can go in here for now. So that maintains this line around here pretty well. Mm, at least let's hope so. They're very likely to be able to attack this unit multiple times. So I'm, I'm actually a, a bit afraid that they might go for this unit. But that would... Um, that would force them to... Do some pretty pretty tough attacks, I think. And they also need to scramble towards this location because with only the British, they might not be able to make it. And even here, it's a question of how much can these guys take? I think as it is, I'd rather have you in Antwerp, take the port. And... Not gonna, gonna lie, it's actually quite a bit of damage that I've taken here. Um, Need to reinforce this artillery back up to 10 as well. Mm. <clears throat> it's taking a lot longer to go through Belgium than I would have hoped. And defeating a British unit like this is also not going to be easy. I, I actually don't have the, the forces to break through. Catching Capturing Nancy is nice. It's a national morale objective. Mm. And I did capture both the loose mine and Lille as well, which will deprive the French of uh, plenty of juice uh, as well. And that's my hope at least. Yeah, let's reinforce the units out here. You're going to do another forced march to start joining in. And there are a couple of units which can advance here. I need to do a lot of repairs again as well before I'll be able to, to advance. I, I really think this is too risky. It probably cuts off these forces as well. 
But if they have other forces around here besides these two, they're gonna, just going to outright destroy that unit. Which they already might as well do, but by staying at least one hex to the back, I hope to negate that. Mm, actually, maybe they're better off moving in. No, 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 no. This is the mine. The French will surely try to take back the mine if, if I move away from that hex. That's no good. No good at all. Okay, uh, back here. You at least need to reinforce. Um, as I mentioned before, I don't consider this to be my priority target. And thus, I'm not sure how much of, of that I, I want to risk. Hmm. I probably won't be able to take that back, so I'm a, a little hesitant to go after that. But I would like to at, at least get some successes. So, uh, why don't... I'm, I'm a bit surprised that they can't take any units right now. But maybe it's because they deployed here this turn. They, they probably have to wait. At any rate, I might be able to destroy either this 8th strength unit or the 7th strength unit while retreating. Well, not with that luck. But who knows. Let's move you back into Johannesburg. Hmm. Okay. You see, I think these guys will probably repair and the qu uh, it's a question of how many units will they have left after that. Um, I think I want to send you off into the Mashurian Licks to hold there. And the important thing to, to do here is establish a decent front line. Um, which is going to be challenging, at least here. Um, They would have entrenchments of one, which is really low. So maybe I would just be better off just giving it to them. Keep it at that. I mean, these guys kind of need to move back as well. So... Maybe I should just give, give up these entrenchments as it is. And hold my defensive line like this. Uh, as it is, I again think these guys will repair. Maybe I get to destroy another core next turn and then I might be in a position to to do something about uh, their overwhelming numbers I'm kind of looking to do the same down here in the sense that I need to destroy enemy units up until the the point where like they will no longer have enough units to attack me properly if we look, not at this, at the reports, I believe we can see how much MPP they get as well. Um, maybe, graphs, MPPs. So, we can see that the British 
they get 269, the French 268, Italians nothing, they haven't joined anybody. These guys get 55, so not that much for, and this is Serbia, I think. This is Russia, they get 254 as well, but they, they lost 701. The French as well, like if we can keep doing some stuff like this, making them lose more than they gain, and then of course we'll eventually get the upper hand. Um, although we also lost, we lost a lot. How did we lose all that? I didn't lose any units. Hmm. Was it really that bad? Last 1000 MPP. On what? Hmm. I didn't lose any units. Maybe all of these guys are worth that much? Hmm. I mean, both Antwerp and Brussels give me plus 7 MPP, and I do have this port now. So this is 14, 18, yeah, getting 21, 33 extra MPP from taking these objectives. And that's that gets reduced from the enemy amounts of MPP, so that should be okay. see what this does. Oh, and two. Let's uh, deal with the HQs first. Because and they have these guys attached. And you have them attached. These HQs can only take five, it seems like. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they could... Okay, let, let's actually try to do this. Very nice. It's really about getting the, the good odds. Um, these guys can't force march right now. I can technically still move them into Stanislav, but it's one, two, attack, yeah. I, I will have to give up Lemberg, which really sucks, but I think it might be necessary. If I attack with you, then these guys will have to retreat in there. Because attacking with them costs an action point. And then they have, th uh, they have three left. One, two, three. And that's no good. I need them to retreat out here. Because they're too weak. Trading one cavalry for Tarnopol, the oil fields, and Lemberg is not great.
Hmm. Let's do it like that. Hmm. Okay, let's move you into Stanislav. You're abandoning Proskubov. Hmm. And in order to save these guys from multiple attacks, I kind of have to move like this. Outside of Pshamizel. And protect myself like that. <clears throat> if I'm lucky and many of these guys were repaired, then I might be able to save these guys. Um, and But that's pretty much the only way. I'll start having the cavalry entrench. This way. Which probably, yeah, it helps a little bit. They have to entrench indeed from three sides. And you from two. For now. There we go. And they don't need to entrench in that position. They will also entrench like this. Okay, they are reinforced as well. Okay, not bad. Of course, they can still rebuy those units, but rebuying a unit is much more costly than anything else, and um, going back to the reports for uh, Russia to rebuy such a cavalry unit, it will take up half of their collected income. So that should be pretty good. And I don't know whether it actually takes it into account right now what they lost. I guess it kind of does. 882. I think, I don't know, maybe it's overall, like, last turn and this turn? That's kind of how it looks like. And their collected income then has been... 254 because they only got one turn yet? Or something? Who knows? Okay, I will... Reinforce these. <clears throat> now, as for Belgrade. Belgrade gives two MPP per strength point. And these guys, on average, get 50. So... Wait, is this just a detachment? Oh yeah, it's not an artillery. <clears throat> So then, if I attack like this, that's a really bad deal. Hmm. It doesn't seem to particularly get better either. But if I want to lower their efficiency, etc. I kind of have to keep going. Although I don't like it. Because I'm also afraid that these guys will go and attack. Really? You? Oh, wow. I 
didn't even have them under the HQ, even though it's a very bad HQ. The readiness of morale is slightly lower now. But I don't dare attack here. I think my units are already far too weak. Um, yeah, I really might not have the strength to break through there. At any rate, I'm pretty much done with the land war for this turn. So next turn, I'll once or next episode, I once again will be taking care of the navy and switch it back to the enemy. So for now, thanks for watching. Do hope you enjoyed this and see you all next time. Bye-bye.